Sorry for the delay. Um, I'm Mashudu Chiflaro, uh, University of Pretoria, Steve Biko Academic. Uh, I just want to share with you a concept that we are working on called LCR, uh, which stands for Lawrence Clinical Complication and High Risk Comorbidity in Laringo, Malaysia. As a, um, a system that we are using to determine the burden of disease so that we'll be able to manage our patients. Um, I'm just going to cover introduction, aims, methodology, and the results and the conclusions. And I'm sure all of you are very aware of how we classify and um, all the seven classification of the Laringoma Lachia, which are not usually um, uh, agreeing with each other, but all of them, they touch the important part, which is epiglottic. Um, area epiglottic folds, the arachnoids, and the rest of the larynx. But I always find that they don't mention anything about the severity, mild, moderate, and severe of the laryngomalagia. So we all know that uh, the definition of the laryngomalagia is well known. That is a um, flaccid and uh, of the supraglottic structure, which affect the um, the growth of the child and the eating and the breathing, and it can start any time within the first two weeks of birth. And um, and most of the patients uh, is the commonest cause of uh, congenital uh, strido in seventy five percent of patients. And um, there are a lot of theory, and uh, some of them is that there's a little bit of immaturity of the larynx and but now of late it has come to be understood that there is neurogenic um, which are poor or develop later that the sensation in the supra uh, glottic area the false cause is very poor that's why there's a chance of aspiration and um, recurrent pneumonia and failure to strive and also difficult with breathing, which may lead to severe comorbidity. So in the past um, three years, we've been following our patients. We're having um, the diagnosis of clinical um, laryngomalacia. But the problem was every patient who present with um, laryngomalacia, um, we cannot be told how severe is laryngomalacia. They just say there's a congenital strido. So when you see the patient, you don't know whether they're aspirating or they have apnea or they have hypoxia or they have copalmonale. So we decided to come with this um, system that we wanted to be able to categorize them into mild, moderate, severe, and um, interesting. The uh, IPOC had a very nice um, categorization of this kind of patients. So for us, we even reach a stage where we say to a patient, to a, to a nurse or a doctor referring to say, what is your um, oxygen saturation, even using a pulse oximeter? If it's greater than 96%, we know we're dealing with my Yes. Sorry to interfere. We request you to zoom out your slide slightly because it's zoom in. Hope you can understand. You, you can't see. Must I zoom in on or out? I zoom. think I, yeah. please, uh, Alexandra, please, we need to, please, your assistant now. Please. Can you see the slides? No, we, we, all, we are stuck in one slide. And I think uh, it's better to ask someone to pray, uh, to make it, uh, the smallest slide are not coming in the ma the main screen. So uh, just uh, Alexandra, just g guide Dr. Uh, Mashodo, please. Maybe let me get your technician to help us from your side so that uh, we'll be able to present. Can I get guidance from somebody? Uh, Alexandra? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, can you uh, assist Dr. Mashodo? Is 
Let me zoom in. Beyond this, I'm going to zoom in so it becomes too small. It's technology from this far to that far. It will be great if just your uh, uh, the, the nurse she can open because they are aware with the PowerPoint just to, uh, to press. Hello. Uh, Hello, Dr. Mashudin. Um, I'm sorry for interrupting you. Uh, could you please move your slides? Can you see them? Uh, yes, yes. Now the slide only. The slide only. Don't put that one. And in your... Okay, and also give a zoom out. And keep it as a hundred. Okay. Can you put on uh, uh, yes. a presentation now? Yes, yes, doctor. Can you go on? Can you see now? Yes, Dr. Mushudu. Yes, doctor, you can continue. Yes. It's better. Yes, better, sorry, yes, sorry. sure. Is better now. Yeah, sure. Yes, yes, I apologize. And then um, for our just on the slide on pediatric laryngomalacia, that we tried to determine the burden of the disease made of the based on the complications, clinical complication, um, oxygen saturation, and mm -hmm. also comorbidities. With that, we managed to manage our patients better. So in the past two years, this is what we have been doing. And this is what we wanted to share with you. Uh, we all aware that um, laryngomalacia causes gastroesophageal reflux worse because of the negative pressure. And um, so in any of the patients with laryngomalacia, uh, they continue to have a severe laryngomalacia if um, reflux is not treated, which is a well-known uh, phenomenon. And the summary of the literature has always confirmed that um, the percentage of infant with congenital laryngomalacia requiring su uh, surgical intervention, they differ from studies to studies, uh, from 11% to almost 22%, depending on who studies are you looking at. So our aim was to determine the kind of patient that we are seeing and to check the burden of the disease of the laryngomalacia and also to see if our novel grading system will be able to help us to determine the severity of um, disease uh, and also to propose a scoring system and to determine the usefulness of this uh, new grading system in our patients. Uh, this was a retrospective cross-sectional uh, chart review, and it was done at the tertiary Center Steve Biko Academic Hospital, and the data analysis was done by our statistician. So the first section that we look at was um, the section that we call the laryngeal levels, so that we decided to categorize them as level one, level two, level three, level four, which simply mean epiglottis, uh, area epiglottic folds, uh, arytenoids, and also the laryngeal inlet. And we score them based on um, mild, moderate, and severe. And the GBOD simply mean global burden of disease. And the total score of global burden of disease is around 29. So for each um, evaluation on examination and anesthesia, we can be able to give a score. And for a mild, it can, everything is reasonable, uh, reasonable, normal. So we give zero, zero. And for severe, for moderate, we give a uh, level one. And uh, for severe, we give a score of five to eight. And for moderate, sorry, we give uh, one to four. 
Doctor, excuse me, Doctor Mashodo. Uh, we are we cannot see the slide you are talking about. Uh, if you oh. can repeat a slide, uh, you you need to magnify the slide because in the screen now we only see one slide and you are going to the second and third. Please, Alexandra, please guide Doctor Mashodo. Which slide are you seeing? Is it laryngeal level slide? We are now in the uh, in this uh, diagram, the the class, uh, the diagram, uh, the one you the diagram, which is uh, a comprehensive care algorithm. The algorithm. You are in the algorithm now. Yes, yes. You are talking about the laryngeal level. Yeah. So it's good that, that everyone every slide you go, you click. So we will be seeing this. Thank you. So you can see the slides. Now we can see it. So it's good to press it. When you explain it, you press it so we can see it. Thank you. OK, I, have, I, I apologize. OK, so I was um, talking about the laryngomalacia and reflux, that um, it is well known that um, they form a vicious circle in, in small children who present with laryngomalacia. So every patient need to be assumed to have a laryngomalacia or hello. to treat a laryngomalacia. Hello, hello, uh, Dr. Nazibu. Yes. Sorry for uh, interrupting you again. Could you please uh, move the slides? Can you see the slide? Yes, we can see it. You can see now. And so our aim and objective was to try to determine the demographic and also the burden of the disease of these patients that we saw in the past two years uh, amidst the uh, COVID pandemic and also the, to uh, develop a grading system and a scoring system and to determine the usefulness of our grading system. As I mentioned, it was a retrospective cross-sectional uh, chart review, and uh, which we did here at um, Steve Biko Academic and the department uh, in our uh, firm of PEDS ORL, Pediatric Otorhinolaryngology, which I had, and uh, the results were analyzed by our statistician. Um, the first section of our Scoring of a burden of disease is this laryngeal levels. Most of the classification just tells you that you have laryngomalacia at different section. So we decided to say, if we do logical anatomical, looking from the top to the bottom into the trachea, which will be epiglottis, area epiglottic folds, arytenoids, and also the larynx or uh, vocal cords we could be able to score them in what we call global burden of disease, GBOD, and which gave us a total score of 29. When we consider clinical complication from laryngomalacia and comorbidity in the same patient with laryngomalacia. The mild form um, were given usually a score of zero because usually they, they, you might find that the epiglottis is normal or the area epiglottic fault, you can see more than 50%. And uh, there's no minim minimal swelling of the arytenoid and the whole vocal, uh, the laryngeal inlet is within normal. And then the moderate is when you have a um, long and a kelt omega shaped infantile a tubular, we gave it one and the shortened um, uh, area epiglottic fault which is less than 50%, we also gave it one. And a long, redundant, thick, thickened, bulky arytenoid, we gave it one. And a visible of the larynx, which is um, a more than a less than 50%, we gave it one. But when you come to severity of the burden of disease, we found that when you have a collapsed posterior or prolapsed uh, um, posterior per petiole position of the epiglottis, uh, we gave it two. And when the, the um, any epiglottic fold is shortened and redundant, 
and mucosa are collapsing medially during inspiration. We gave it two. And, and, and when we look at our arytenoids, when the, arter the anterior and medial collapse, floppy cartilage and excessive mucosa, we also gave it two as a severe one. And when we cannot see, or the whole uh, vocal cords are not visible, we also gave it uh, um, a score of two. And we came to the complications of laryngoma lachial, but the most important thing on the complication, we look at the level of the saturation. If the, um, the saturation on a uh, resting saturation, even on the pulse oximeter is between 96 to 100%, that was considered to be mild and we gave a score of zero. And uh, when there's usually in stridal with no other symptom, radiographic findings suggestive of secondary uh, airway lesion, that was considered as a mild complication. But when you have um, a, a moderate complication, it's a patient with a difficulty with feeding cough and choking and regurgitation, or you have a patient with um, uh, who has some vomiting, but the most significant thing we looked at what was the resting saturation um, of oxygen, which was less than 96%. The severe, with the score was between three and 10. This is the most of the patient whom we have to take to theater. Those were the patient were failure to thrive, loss of weight, uh, severe airway compromise, and those were the patients who were developing apneic attack and apneic spells, and who were developing bradycardia sometime when they eat, and who have a severe difficulty intercostal, suprasternal recession, and those who have chronic pulmonary hypertension uh, who end up developing co-pulmonale and heart failure, and the recurrent aspiration and pneumonia. And they are resting um, oxygen on pulse oximeter was less than 86%. So with this categorization, immediately we will tell that this is a patient with a severe complication who will need some form of intervention or surgical um, uh, uh, treatment. And then at the same time, we had to look for uh, comorbidities, which is a high risk on this kind of patients. Things like reflux, which is very common, uh, neurologic disease, which might be hypertonic, tonia, cerebral palsy, mental retardation, or um, secondary airway, supraglottic stenosis, tracheomalacia, or vocal cord paralysis, and things like congenital heart disease, and patient with um, congenital um, syndromes like genetic disorder, craniofacial dysmorphic, and Down syndrome with charge. Those were the patients who, whom we checked on the number of comorbidity. If they had no comorbidity, they scored at zero, but if they have one to two comorbidity, they scored at one, and a score of one or two, one um, score per comorbidity. And uh, if they have a um, comorbidity greater than three, they were scored, they were given three score. With these three categories, we, we were able to categorize them into a burden of disease, mild, moderate, or severe. The demography of our patients were, were that most of them were males compared to female, that seven were, were male, which was uh, around 65% and very few female which were in keeping with all the most of the literature studies. And then um, the presentation age of presentation, most of them presented within the first two weeks of life. And there were those, but there was no one who presented beyond six weeks of life. Most of them, they presented early. And then we wanted to see what was the st statistical significance of this clinical presentation. I'm sorry, it might not be so clear to you there, but um, from our studies, we could not determine any clinical presentation or symptom which was statistically significant. So which means that 
if the patient present with laryngoma lachia irrespective of symptoms, they are already uh, diagnosed as laryngoma lachia, we need to determine the burden of the disease using the scoring system as I mentioned above. And then the treatment that were, were given um, and the complication score, uh, we had a very low complication, but most of our patients, they had a, a supraglottoplasty in more than 95%, uh, in more than 90% of the patients. And there were few whom we had to do tracheostomy and a few whom we have to go back again for, for, for uh, another procedure. But majority responded well to just releasing um, um, area epiglottic fold and sometimes trimming the, the epiglottis. And if the arytenoids were a little bit redundant, also reducing the mucosa. So we found that the, sco the scoring system were very, very helpful in the managing of our patients because we could tell that with such a patient who is mild or moderate or severe, this is the approach that we are going to take. And in the majority of them, we, we manage to, to help them and be managed to release them from the, the ICU. Because most of the patients had to go to ICU and they were being looked in the ICU and they were occupying ICU beds. As I mentioned, the treatment mainly were the supraglottal um, plasty and no major other operation were made except tracheostomy in some of the patients who had um, a cardiac complication and secondary um, lung pathology. On the high risk comorbidities, most of them they present with a cardiac complication and there were those who had craniofacial anomaly and also those who have cerebral palsy. So we, in summary, we realized that um, most of our patients were um, having um, a global burden of disease, which were moderate to severe in eight, and only three had um, a moderate burden of disease. And there was only one who had a mild uh, burden of disease that we did not do any uh, surgical intervention and the common complications uh, comorbidity were cerebral palsy, subglottic stenosis and some they have cardiac and then craniofacial pre-robin sequence, tracheoesophageal fistula down syndrome and um, oral cyst and teratoma and we had some pal palate and uh, all of them that we have seen in the past years were 11 patients. As I mentioned, uh, more male than female, seven and, and four females. And this is how we, we summarize the severity of each of the patients. This is just an example. So you could see that in a patient, we'll say in level one, which is larynx, is a moderate multi-level laryngomalacia with a severe complication and single comorbidity. And with that, we'll be able to go on and do surgical intervention. And we found it very, very helpful that when somebody presents, I have a patient with laryngoma lachia, the first question we ask, which area of the larynx is involved? Then it was easier sometimes to say, you have, we have um, mild, mild level, which means it was not a severe laryngoma lachia, and we have a moderate complication and we had no comorbidity. Such patient we could treat conservatively, which we had one of them where we just give anti reflux and we follow up and the patient could grow out of the, of the um, uh, laryngomalacia complication. But we had some who had severe multi level laryngomalacia, severe complication, and uh, at least more than three comorbidity. And those were the patients whom we knew that we are going to be uh, having to do a lot of interventions. We know that uh, there are different approach to the management. There are those that you can just observe and there are those where you can do medical, usually uh, reflux, acid suppression, 
and those where you have to, to take surgical intervention. And uh, fortunately, we didn't do epiglottopexy. Uh, it was mainly tracheo, um, tracheostomy, most probably because the number of the patients were very small. In conclusion, we can simply uh, come to say that uh, we found that what we call our LCR larynx, clinical complication, high risk comorbidity scoring system uh, help us in planning the management of laryngomalacia. And uh, we found that this scoring system was uh, useful and uh, it was applicable. And uh, we also came to appreciate that the oxygen saturation alone can tell you whether you have mild, moderate, or severe, even before you touch the patient. Even if somebody is referring the patient from neonatal unit, we just ask them the first question, what is your um, saturation? If they tell us that it's 86% or less, then we know that we have a problem. And then we start to plan our treatment. And this um, presentation is being prepared for sending for, for publication. So the full um, article will be in one of the journals, peer review journal. Thank you so much for allowing me to present. And sorry for the for the um, all the, the mild problems that is.